All right. Shalom, Most High Christ bless everybody. Uh, welcome to today's topic. Um, I'm Brother Raphael. To my right. I'm Brother Anab. And to my left. Brother Jacob. You know, um, there's a particular question. For some odd reason, our people seem to think that they are African. Okay, we just had a commemoration uh, last week about the whole 1619 to 2019 prophecy that a lot of people are being pushed into um one thing you have to understand brothers and sisters you so-called blacks and you so-called hispanics whose fathers are of negro than any in descent we are the biblical israelites make no mistake about that and what we have to start doing we have to cast down vain imaginations okay because what our people do we just accept anything that is given to us we just accept, they called us African-Americans, okay? And what ends up happening, what we do, we just accept it. We never question what was Africa before it was, before it was called Africa or where does the term America come from? We never ask those questions because we always hear it in the media. We always hear it there with African-American, African-American. That's all you hear. Even the um, museum is called the African-American Museum in, uh, in D.C., Okay, and one question is, what Af which African are you? Because when you look at Africa, when you look at the whole country, the continent of Africa, you will see that there are different countries within Africa. So you have to ask yourself a serious question, which African are you? Okay, and the one of the biggest lies, we was always told, according to the Bible, that we were Ham, okay? Uh, the curse of Ham. That's the reason why we were allowed to be put into slavery because they used the whole curse of Ham. That's a lie they've been telling us, but we accept it. We never, some of us do, some of us don't. But we're going to do today, brothers and sisters, we're going to go over the scriptures and prove some points, and we're going to go over some scholarship to prove some points, and let's find out what we already know. Who are we? According to the Bible, okay? As customary, um, let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 80, verse 20. And let's go to the Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. You have to under understand something, brothers and sisters. We have to couple the laws with Christ. We can't just say we have Christ and no laws, and we just can't say we have laws and no Christ. They have to be coupled together. That's one thing we always tell our people. It's not just about solely about laws. Is about laws in Christ. We always say that laws in Christ, okay? And how do we know that? Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 20. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8, and verse 20. Go ahead. To the law. The Bible says to the law, okay? As we know, the Bible is compacted with laws, okay? You're talking from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It says to the law. Read on, brother. And to the testimony. And to the testimony. So if you know, we're going to jump from book to book. Why? Because we are instructed to read the Bible. Precept must be upon precept. So what is the testimony? Let's go to the book of the Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10, brother. And we're going to go back to Isaiah 8 and 20 to finish up. The book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 10. Go ahead. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Okay. And he said unto me, see thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant mm. and of thy brethren mm -hmm. that have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of who? Of Jesus. Read on, brother. Worship God. Mm -hmm. For the testimony of Jesus mm -hmm. is the spirit of prophecy. So here's the thing. The testimony of the Christ, the Messiah, the King of Kings, is the spirit of prophecy. If you don't have the spirit of Christ on you, you will not understand the Bible in its entirety. You'll be lost. Okay? You won't understand uh, biblical history, you don't understand any of that stuff. You just go all through the Bible not having no understanding. Okay? So it's letting you know, it's letting you know to the law and to the testimony, right? Let's go back to Isaiah 8 and 20, and I want the Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Go ahead. To the law, right? And to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. As it is written. If they don't speak according to this word as it is written, not based on your own interpretation, 
as it is written, read on, brother. It is because uh -huh. there is no light in them. There is no light in them. So it's letting you know, if you don't speak according to this word as it is written, there is no light in you. What is the light according to the Bible? Let's find out what the light is because we said there is no light in them, right? So what is the light? So Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23, brother. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. Go ahead. For the commandment is a lamp. So the commandment is a lamp, okay? And you have a lamp in a dark place. Darkness in this context is really dealing with what? Sin. We are in sin. We are dealing with sin right now. So as the light, Christ is the light. So we supposed to be children of the light with the laws coupled with Christ. Read on, brother, what it say? And the law is light. Go ahead. And reproofs of instructions mm -hmm. are the way of life. Reproofs of instructions is correction. Okay? And the law corrects us from being what? From being a sinner, which is transgression of the law, to being righteous which is to keep us other laws in Christ. Remember, we keep saying it, in Christ. We never say just keep, keep laws because people want to twist the words and say all you brothers want to do is talk about laws. No, you have to couple laws with Christ to the law and to the testimony, to the law and to the testimony, okay? Now, let's get to the point. That's, that's something that they've been talking about for quite some time about the whole 400-year prophecy. When, when you go back to Genesis 15, 13, they, 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 they try to take that prophecy during, during the time during Abraham and try to bring it up into now what's going on with the so-called blacks, right? But you have to ask yourself a question. If it was 2019 when we were supposed to be delivered, why are we still here? That's the question. See, that's the problem because we just, we just, people take things and make it a doctrine. They never question where did this come from? Because Christ says this. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 32, because Christ says something. And if you're supposed to be someone that's supposed to love the Bible and is supposed to believe in this Bible, and this is for some of you people who don't even believe in the Bible too because you have to ask yourself a question. Where did you find out that prophecy from? Because if you don't believe in the Holy Bible, because the Bible is the only book that really has prophecies. Let's just keep it honestly. Because that it really has come to pass. Because the Book of the Dead, they definitely don't have any prophecies. Okay? Mm -hmm. The Quran, I don't know where the Quran falls into all this. Where they come with prophecies. Okay? Um, what else? I ain't never heard nobody prophesy out of the Book of Buddha. Right. Right. <laughs> Where's the Book of Buddha at? So, so where are the prophecies? Because you have a, you have a problem now. Because if you say the 400-year prophecy, then you have to understand this particular scripture right here. The book of St. Mark, chapter 13, verse 32. Who has it? I, I agree. Okay. The book of St. Mark, chapter 13 and verse 32. Go ahead, brother. But of that day uh -huh. and that hour right. knoweth no man. What does it say again? The book of Mark, uh -huh. chapter 13 and verse 32. Right. These are the words of Christ. Right. It's written in red, right? Yes, sir. So, so Christ is going to let you know something. No man knows this. But yet, 2012, they said it. <laughs> they said it in 2000. Um, I don't know how many other times they said that the world's supposed to come to the end. But what does it say again, brother, from the Bible? The book of Mark, uh -huh. chapter 13 and verse 32. Go ahead. But of that day uh -huh. and that hour okay. knoweth no man. Right. No, not the angels which are in heaven. So the angels don't even know. So how does a mortal man know when the angels don't know? Read on. Neither the son. Neither who? The son. Read. That's capitalized, too. It's capitalized, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Read on. But the father. But the father. That's it? Well, for 32. So the father is the only one that knows when Christ himself is supposed to come back and judge this place and deliver the repentant Israelites. That's the only one that knows is the Father. No man knows, the angels don't know, and the Son, Christ, don't know. So how can you push the 400-year prophecy? Let's deal with some scholarship right now with the whole 400. Because let's find out we're going to count how many years we're going to deal with this 400-year prophecy that they keep commemorating. Because 
that's one thing we have to do, brothers and sisters. We have to come to, we have to use scholarship and use documentation to prove some points. That's what we, this is supposed to be about the truth, okay? This is Israelite 101. You're supposed to know this stuff. But we, what we're going to do, we're going to take our time, and we're going to simplify it for you, okay? All right, so let's go to it, brother. Let's go right to the scholarship, 1619, right? All right, so this, this book is called Capitalism and Slavery. Mm. Sounds already like America already. <laughs> because, no, seriously, capitalism is what this place has been built on, or even today. Capitalism, okay, is about that money. We're going to find out what drives this. Go ahead, brother. All right, this is page eight under the chapter Origin of Negro Slavery. We're just going to jump right into it. You can see it on your, on your screen. Uh, it says, in addition, the Indian slave was inefficient. The Spaniards discovered that one Negro was worth four Indians. A prominent official in Hispaniola, which is the Caribbean islands, insisted in 1518... Wait a minute. You sure it won't 1619? <laughs> Insisted in 1518 that permission be given to bring Negroes. Wait a minute. Let's hold that. You got the Zion Compact Bible Dictionary? You said you, you said some Negroes, right? Yes, Negroes. We said Negroes. Now, now keep that in mind, brothers and sisters. We're going to play our words a little bit. It said Negroes, right? So the lie has been told that we're African. They've been t they always tell that, right? So the Zama Compact Bible Dictionary, let's know what it is, bro. Let them know. Uh, Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 213. Mm. The definition, Ham. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Negroes, not the Negroes. I don't think y'all understand where in history where you can find Africans call themselves Negroes or someone call themselves, call them Negroes. It says, because it says it again, read it again, bro, so I can understand. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, okay. page 213, definition ham. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, mm. and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. The progenitor is father. If some of y'all don't know what the word progenitor means, it means the father. He's the father of the dark races. It's very specific. Read. Not the Negro. Not the Negro. So why why did they why was that separate? Not the Negro. So it says, but let's find out who those dark nations are. But the Egyptians. Start off with the Egyptians. Go ahead. The Ethiopians. Oh, so now you can't say you Ethiopian. Because at some point our people keep saying Egyptians, Ethiopians, it's still on their hand. Read on. Libyans. Mm-hmm. And Canaanites. Mm -hmm. So Canaanites, when you go back to the scriptures, you're going to see Canaan, whose land that was inherited by us. And we're going to find out what was going on on that land before we got there and the reason why we're giving the laws. So y'all, y'all, see, people keep saying they want to be African. We're going to find the history behind it. But let's finish up on what he, what he was reading, though. I just want to bring that point about Negroes. Right? Go ahead. A prominent official in Hispaniola insisted in 1518 that permission be given to bring Negroes, a race robust for labor, instead, instead of natives so weak that they can only be employed in tasks requiring little endurance, such as taking care of maize fields or farms. So the point there is they were asking for permission in 1518. So if you're asking for permission, that means you already are enslaving 
the Negroes. Mm -hmm. You just want permission to bring them over there. So what were they used for again? They used for labor and what? For robust labor. Mm -hmm. Robust labor, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. Start at verse 15 first. I'm going to show you all something. Okay. Because we have to identify who we are. And how do we identify with it? We identify through the Bible, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Start at, verse, start at start 20, try to do Deuteronomy 1 and 1 first to find out who Moses is talking to. And then we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to show you, because he said labor. He said we use this labor, right? It's going to show you something. See, this is how we identify who we are because our people get wrapped up in words. You call yourself an African, a Negro, which is it? Because those are just by words. We're going to go to that too. Okay? So let's go to it, brother. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 1 first, to find out who Moses is speaking to. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. Go ahead. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So we just established the audience is Israel. So Moses is speaking to the Israelites in ancient times. Now go to chapter 28, verse 15. So Moses is speaking to the Israelites. He's letting us know these are the words. This is what's going to come to pass. These are prophecies that he's talking about mm -hmm. because Moses is a prophet. So he's prophesying thousands of years into the future now. So now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass mm -hmm. if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God mm -hmm. to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, a curse is something bad. It's nothing good. So it's letting you know right off the top, Moses is speaking to the children of Israel, which are the so-called modern-day blacks and modern-day Hispanics today. So he's speaking to our people, letting them know, this is what's going to come to pass if you don't hearken to keep these commandments. Let's deal with one curse. We talked about labor. Didn't we talk about labor? Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 30. I'm going to show you something. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife. Now, listen. You betroth a wife. And you have to understand something. This happened, right? It said, thou shalt betroth a wife. Read on. Thou shalt betroth a wife. And another man shall lie with her. Did that happen to our people during a time of hard bondage, didn't Master Charlie go down to the slave quarters and have his way with our women? He did that. That happened. That's documented. That ain't, that's something we ain't making up. So that happened to the Israelites. It happened to what you call Africans. We're going to find out where the term Africa come from, too, and find out what was Africa before it was called Africa. Because mm -hmm. that's the problem. We so wrapped up in who were we before slavery? Because that's what you have to ask yourself a question. They always put slavery out there Sla that, like, that's when we start. That's when we start existence. We was in sla We were slaves. That, that's, <laughs> we just popped up on the scene. We just slaves. That's it. Okay. Yeah, Israel. We were slaves every time, but eighty years. But what we're trying to say is, what happened before the transatlantic slave trade? What happened before the uh, the sub-Saharan slave trade? With the Arabs, we're going to deal with that too because the Arabs had it in captivity too. Some of y'all don't want to be Muslim. You need to pay attention. That was forced on our people. Believe that. We're going to go to that too because a lot of our people get so wrapped up in, oh, I want to be a Muslim. Oh, I want to be an African. What is it? What African are you? <laughs> okay? So let's get to the point, brother. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 30. Go ahead. Thou shalt be troth thy wife. Okay. And another man shall lie with her. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt build an house. Didn't they, didn't they use, use us to build these plantations? So plantations are still today. They're still, they still um, standing today. As a matter of fact, it's so crazy, they got them as museums now, making money off us again. Remember when we went to that plantation, the Shirley Plantation? We had to pay admission to go into what, to go to see how our people had to live in the big house. We couldn't even live in the big house. What did it say again? It said, we're going we're gonna to do what? We're going to build houses? Thou shalt build a house. Then we build a big house. The white, we built the White House. I people built the White House. The same house that you see Trump living in today, we built that. 
You see, we should build a house, and what should happen? And thou shalt not dwell therein. You couldn't live in a big house. They, they put you behind in the slave quarters. We live in a slave quarters today called the projects. You don't think so? Think about it. A people that's been poor and disenfranchised, when we were so-called set free, what inheritance do we have? Because the so-called white can go back centuries on his inheritance. That's why you think, why you think it's such a disparity and financial, um, uh, I want to say being disenfranchised. Because our people right now are still living in slave quarters right now. Economic slavery, we still living in economical slavery. We still live that way because just because you may think you're a billionaire, the white man got more billions. <laughs> he got more zillions. You know, what would they say? Jay-Z just made it to the, to the thousand, with the, with the billion dollar club? The white man been there. Okay. So I'm just letting it be known is this because we put into slavery and we were we still struggling today as a nation. You might find a few entertainers, athletes making money, but that's it. Because if you look at our people on the whole, where are we at? We're on the bottom. We're not ruling nothing. Okay? So what was so what was that? Thou shalt plant a vineyard uh -huh. and shall not gather the grapes thereof. That's still happening to the Hispanics today. They 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 but they're picking guavas. They're picking all these different things. Well, even when we went to Shirley Plantation. Right. What were they, they were doing? Out there picking grapes. Yep, for the winery. You see, we showing y'all these things are still happening today. Deuteronomy chapter 28 is still going on, brothers and sisters. This right here, we're still in biblical times. We just aren't in ancient times. That's what y'all don't understand. This is still biblical times because it's things in this Bible hadn't even happened yet. So that's what we keep telling y'all. This book is still, is still moving. This is the only book that you have on this planet that's still moving. This book still moves. So we're just letting y'all know. So let's get to the point. Now let's go to the book of uh, Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4. Because we was prophesied to go into great slavery. And then I'm going to go back to Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37, to show the byword of proverb. Because we are called something. Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, and verse 4. Go ahead. And thou, even thyself, uh -huh. shall discontinue from thine heritage. So we discontinue from our heritage. So what happened, we were brought over here. As we know it, we were taken away from our land. Okay, it started 70 A.D. When Titus and Vespasian came in. And they destroyed Jerusalem because Christ prophesied it was going to happen in the book of Luke. And what happened was a lot of our brothers and sisters had to go down into Africa and to go all over the different regions of the lands. Not just in just Africa. We was in Spain. We was also in Europe. We was all over. So our people had to, but the bulk of our people had to go down to Africa. Why? Because we had to do what? So-called Africa because we had to blend in. The same way Christ had to be blended in, him and his uh when Christ and Mary, when the, when the angel came and talked to um, Joseph and told him to take Christ and bring him down to Egypt during that time, there we had to blend in because we may look like Africans, but we're not. And we're going to prove those points, okay, with more scholarship. Now, what does it say again, brother? The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. Go ahead. And thou, even thyself, mm -hmm. shall discontinue from thine heritage I gave thee. That who gave you? That I gave thee. Okay. And I will I will cause thee to serve thine enemies mm. in the land which thou knowest not. Mm. Mm. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So right now we're serving our enemies. You know what that means? That means we are in captivity. We're paying taxes. Okay. We, we're paying tribute to another nation. Okay, right now, we're not making no laws. So that's another thing that y'all have to pay attention to because even Africans above us. See, y'all see y'all think because cause an African, a so-called African could go back to Nigeria. Nigeria is a country with an African, isn't it? So a Nigerian, you never hear a Nigerian call himself an African. You never hear a Somalian call himself a Somalian. You never hear Ethiopian call himself an African. I mean, you hear Somalian call himself a Somalian, but what I mean is, you never hear so-called Africans call themselves Africans. We're the only ones on the planet that call ourselves two continents. Okay? Where does that come from? Let's find out. 
Let's find out what Leo Scipionis, Leo Scipionis Africanus. Let's, let's look at that. Let's find out where that came from. Because, and let's find out when the term African American came to pass. When we, when were we start being called African Americans? Because that's a big problem. You're being called two continents. So, for some of y'all who don't know, a little brief history. Africa was conquered by a so-called white man by the name of Leo Scipionis Africanus. In, the, in 210 B.C. to 219 B.C., during the Punic Wars, Hannibal was conquered. So what happened was, what the white man does is when he take lands, he calls it after his own name. Matter of fact, go to that. Give me the book of Psalms chapter 49, verse 11. We're going to go to that about Leo Scipionis Africanus, and then we're going to go to Amerigo Vespucci. So you got to ask yourself a question. Where did Africa come from? And we're going to go to the Bible and find out what Africa was called before it was called Africa. <laughs> so, so Leo Scipio Africanus. Or hear your mic. They can hear me, though. Oh, they can hear you? Yeah. Okay, cool. Leo Africanus. Mm. One theory suggests that the name Africa is derived from the name of a famous European traveler named Leo Africanus. This, this ain't right. It's supposed to be... Uh, he was he conquered it. Yeah. During the Punic Wars, two ten BC to two nineteen BC. Because he conquered. He conquered because what well, y'all don't know, and you can actually look this up for yourselves. But, well you got it? Well it, it it says right here. Okay. When the Romans finally captured Carthage. Carthage. Which is Africa. Who in our, Northern Africa. Who came out of Carthage? Hannibal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They called the land North Africa Africa. And Scipio changed his name to Pu Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus. <laughs> so, yeah, it's still it's named after him. So it's still named after him, right? Mm -hmm. Let's find out what America's named after. Let's go to America now. Because we, we proven points. This is history right here, y'all. So if you call yourself an African, what was Africa called before it was called Africa? We're going to find out what the Bible says about this. Okay? So now let's find out, is, is it Mer uh, Amerigo Vespucci, right? We go to him. We just found out. We just established. Oh, you want me to look it up? Yeah. Oh, I thought you had it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he, he didn't have it. But you can look it up, though. You want me to pull it up on the computer? I mean, you can, but we're just looking at it like this right now. Okay. Okay. Amerigo Vespucci, because now you're dealing with one white man. So this 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 so-called white man, Leo Scipionis Africanus, he conquered Carthage. He conquered he conquered Africa during the Punic Wars. So he conquered that land, and he named it after himself. So let's find out about this land here, America. Where that name come from? Because you call yourself an African. American, okay, which African are you? <laughs> you got to ask yourself that question. There's 54 countries. 54 countries, right? Africa. 54 countries in Africa, right? We just named a few, Ethiopia, Nigeria, okay? All right, Amerigo Vespucci was an Italian explorer, explorer financier, navigator, and cartographer who was born in the Republic of Florence, Sailing for Portugal around 1501-1502, Vespucci demonstrated that Brazil and the West Indies were not Asia's outskirts, mm -hmm. but a separate unexplored landmass, colloquial, colloquially known as the New World. The new continent was named America after the Latin version of Vespucci's first name. So, let's go to the Bible. What does the Bible say about this? Because, who else, see, now we just established Africa's name after a white man. America's name after a white man. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 49 and verse 11. Now, the book of Psalms. 
chapter 49 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. Their inward thoughts is that their house shall continue forever. That's what this man thinks. You know, you have to understand something. When he conquered Africa, which you would call Africa, when he conquered America, his mindset, he thinks centuries in advance. His inward thought is his house is going to last forever. Read on. And their dwelling places to all generations. Mm. They call their lands after their own names. Say what? What does it say? They call their lands after their own names. So we just established that's, that's, that basically is a prophecy. So they named Africa. Let's find out what Africa was called according to the Bible before they called it Africa. We made, I made a statement. So now we're going to go back to the Bible again. To prove some points, we're casting down a lot of lies, but our people do not want to go to the Bible and see it for themselves. So let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 105, and verse 23, and I want you to read already 27. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 105, and verse 23. Mm. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned. In the land of Ham. The land of what? The land of Ham. Mm. And he increased his people greatly. Because that was in Egypt. We were in Egypt at that time because we was in slavery by another dark-skinned nation because Ham is what? That's, Ham, that's, that's the father. That's the son of Ham is the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. So the Egyptians had the Israelites in slavery. Okay, another dark-skinned nation. Go ahead, brother. And he increased his people greatly mm -hmm. and made them stronger than their enemies. Mm. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal subtly with his servants. And they, they did that during that time. They dealt, they dealt very crafty with us, okay, because we were producing quickly. Mm -hmm. So they had to figure out a way. We got to shut these Israelites down. Before they conquer us. Just the same way now. We got to shut them down with Planned Parenthood. They're producing too quickly. Okay? Same mindset. Read on. He sent Moses his servant mm. and Aaron whom he had chosen. Mm -hmm. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. The land of Ham. So when you look at Africa, what you call Africa, it was called the land of Ham. Before the so-called white man came and conquered it. Because that land was given, with, it was for who? It was for the Hamites at the time. Okay? You got something? Yeah, you said that, you know, Israel was slaves in Egypt, right? Yes, sir. All right, pull up uh, cranial. Some of you brothers and sisters need to pay attention to this. This book is called Crania Egyptaka. You got it? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, we got it. So this is Crania Egyptaka, and it's page 66. Mm. And it's sentence number eight. It says, Negroes were numerous in Egypt, but their social position in ancient times was the same as it is now, mm. that of servants and slaves. So we're the same, the same people that were slaves in Egypt were slaves in America. So it's showing you something. Another dark-skinned people put another dark-skinned people in slavery. How long were we in that slavery? 430 years, okay? So really when you think about what Abraham, the prophecy of Abraham, it was dealing with Egypt. Not the new Egypt, America, because no one knows when this particular captivity is going to come to an end. We know it's the last captivity. We do know that much. But no one has a date to say, yeah, this, this, is, this is the date when we're going to be delivered. 
No one has that day. We just read that in Mark. No one, the father, the, the son don't know. The angels don't know. Only the father knows. Okay? So we just established that the Egyptians had us in slavery. The same thing they're doing today with us today, the new Egypt. Okay? It's a difference between the Egyptian, the African, and the Israelites. Okay? You got that book on the craniums? On, on, on the, um, the different structure? That's what you just read. Okay, I just want to make that big. So, so now, now let's go to Exodus 11 and 7. Let's go what the Bible says about that. The book of Exodus, chapter 11 and verse 7. Go ahead. But against any of the children of Israel mm. shall not a dog move his tongue. So a dog in this context, brothers and sisters, is talking about, <laughs> is really talking about um, the other nations. Okay? Because what happens to our people we forget. We just go along and just follow the other nations. So the other nations are called dogs. That's what the, that's what the Bible calls them. Read on. Against man or beast, uh -huh. that ye may know how the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So we just found that the Most High puts a difference between the Egyptian and the Israelite is a difference between us, okay? The Most High puts that difference between us. So even today, you can see it today. We're not like that so-called Africans today. The Africans even know that much, okay? I mean, I don't know if y'all know anything about the movies, but when you, when you watch the movie Sugar Hill, you listen to what that African told, so-called African told, um, Wesley Snipes and his brother, he said, I'm not going to associate myself with cotton pickers. So they understand that they know that we're not like them. They know that. Okay? But what do we do? We follow them. Okay? And let's find out what the Obama, the works they were doing, since y'all want to be Egyptian so much. But let's go to Psalms. Let's go to Psalms chapter 106, verse 21 first. Let's, let's build up to it. And then I want to go to then I want to go to Leviticus chapter 18. We're gonna start off. We're gonna show you something, y'all. See, y'all wanna be Egyptian so much? Let's find out how they were in ancient times first. Start at verse 21. The Psalms 106, verse 21. The book of Psalms, chapter 106 and verse 21. Go ahead, brother. They forget God, their Savior. Mm. Which had done great things in Egypt. Go ahead. Wondrous works in the land of Ham. There we go again. <laughs> there we go again. The land of Ham. That's what the Bible calls Africa. The land of Ham. Read on. And terrible things by the Red Sea. You better believe that. He, uh, he parted the Red Sea. Read on. Therefore, he said that he would destroy them. Mm. Had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath. Lest he she should destroy them. Go ahead. Yea, they despise the pleasant land. Mm. They believe not his word. That's our people. Never they still the same way today. Don't want to believe we show your brother, you the Israelite. Oh man, I don't even want to hear that. No, they still won't trust in Egypt. They still won't <laughs> trust in Egypt. We're gonna go to that too. Read on. But murmured in their tents and hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. Still the day we still doing the same thing today. Same spirit exists today. Read on. Therefore, he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness. Same, that's what he's going to do again. Purge the rebels. Read on. To overthrow their seed also among the nations. The nations. Read on. <laughs> and to scatter them in the land. Oh, that's what's happening. We got scattered. We're gonna get, we got scattered again. Read on. They joined themselves <laughs> also unto Baal Peor. To the damn devil. The same way today, we join ourselves to the devil today. Same thing. Read on. And ate the sacrifices of the dead. Mm. Thus, they provoked him to anger with their inventions. Mm. And the plague break in upon them. Mm. Then stood up Phineas and executed judgment. Mm. And the plague was stayed. Mm -hmm. And that was counted unto him for righteousness. <laughs> Unto all generations forevermore. Go ahead. 
They angered him also at the waters of strife. Our people still doing the same thing, still angering the Lord, not following his commandments. Read on. So that it went ill with Moses for their sakes. Go ahead. Because they provoked his spirit so mm -hmm. that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. Because because that's how our people that's how our people are. They contended with Moses so bad. Moses is the meekest man on the planet. They was content with his brother so much the man slipped up with his mouth. And he couldn't even get to the kingdom because he slipped up. That's that's how our people our people contend so much against our own people, it calls you to error. And that's what happened to Moses. That's how we do today. We show you, brother, the, the, we are the Israelites. You got our own people under the guise of Christianity always want to come and contend with us. We said, brothers, let's sit down. Let's go in the Bible. Let's prove some points. Now, nah, they don't want to hear that. But if the white man said, they go right along with him and follow him all day. But people that look just like you, that got some understanding, you don't want to respect that. Okay, believe that. But Moses, Moses slipped with his tongue. And right. He didn't get into the promised land. But a Christian thinks <laughs> that you don't have to do any work. Right. You can do whatever you want to do and be forgiven and get into the kingdom of heaven. Exactly. Remember. And Moses, Moses walked with the Most High. Right. He, he got to meet the Most High. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if he slipped with his tongue, how it is what it would be for us? I don't think y'all understand. Narrow is the way. Broad is the way of destruction. Mm -hmm. I don't think y'all understand that. But read on, brother. Let's finish up. Verse 34. Right. They did not destroy the nations mm. concerning whom the Lord commanded them. You sure the Lord won't tell us to hold hands with the nations? It don't sound like love. It don't sound like love to me, right? What does it say again? <laughs> Verse 34. <laughs> right. They did not destroy the nation uh -huh. concerning whom the Lord commanded. The them. Lord commanded us to destroy these nations because they were doing wickedness on the land. And we're going to find out what wickedness they were doing. Okay, beliefs. Y'all y'all want to keep being Africans? Let's find out what the Africans were doing. Read on. Verse 35. Uh huh. But were mingled among the heathen. Oh, so we were mingled among the heathen. And what happened? And learned their words. Same way today. We want to be everything other than a child of God. You want to be an African. So you start, you know, putting on your African onks and all that stuff. We're going to do it with an onk too. <laughs> then you want to be, a, a, what, what else we want to be? We want to be everything but a child. We want to be an um, a East Indian, a Hindu. Then we want to be a Muslim. We want to be, we want to be everything but what we are called to be. Read on, brother. And they serve their idols. Oh, they serve their what? Idols. Go ahead. Which were a snare unto them. Uh huh. Go ahead. They, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters mm. unto devils. Oh, so let's find. Let's let's do with the Arabs first, because we want to be we we want to be just like them, don't we? Okay. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter two and verse twenty-seven and twenty-eight, and then we we'll go to Jeremiah three and two, and then we we'll go to the scholarship on that. Jeremiah chapter two, verse twenty-seven and verse. 28 brother and then we go and then stay in Jeremiah and go to the next chapter and verse 2 the book of Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 27 go ahead saying to a stock thou art my father oh isn't that what they do they go to these idols we just read it in Psalms we follow the idols just like they follow idols go ahead to, and to a stone thou has brought me forth oh so you go to the stone the cobblestone you want to be a Muslim that's what they do in Mecca they got that cobblestone. They bow down to it. They throw. What do they do? They 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 uh. They call they call it Mecca. They do the pilgrimage. So they think that stone is what? They think it's Allah, right? So that's what they do. So go ahead. And to a stone thou hast brought me forth, mm. for they have turned their back unto me. So that's what we do. We following the we following the Arabian, because we we want we want to be a Muslim. Same thing with the Africans. Same thing. We follow these other gods. Go ahead, brother. And not their face. And not their, go ahead. But in the time of their trouble, mm -hmm. they will say, arise and save us. <laughs> Verse 28. Uh -huh. But where are thy gods? So the Lord will say, where are your gods at? <laughs> arise, save us, Lord. Because see, y'all always want to jump to these different religions. The Lord said, okay, you want to serve those gods? When something happened, okay, where are your gods at? 
Go ahead, brother. That thou has made thee. Uh-huh. Let thee arise, if they can save thee, <laughs> in the time of thy trouble. Mm. For according to the number of this, thy cities are thy gods. Go ahead. O Judah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Verse 29. Wherefore will ye plead with me? Mm. Ye all have transgressed against me, said the Lord. And that's what our people have done. Same thing today we transgress. That's why we're in captivity. Because we follow every other god. Of the other nations. Primarily, our people want to be African so bad. You want to, brothers want to be an Egyptology. They want to be a Pan-African. So we have, that was because we were told by the so-called white man that we're Africans. And then they called African Americans today. That they want to be politically correct today. You got something you want to say? Yeah, but as soon as as soon as somebody gets killed, as soon as something happened to one of our people. Mm -hmm. That's when everybody's in the street crying right. and crying out to the Lord. Right. It's only then that you want to seek the Lord. But he's, he's, he's been asking you for thousands of years right. to turn away from your wickedness and back to him, and he'll accept you back in. But y'all don't want him until your time of trouble. And by then, it's too late. <laughs> it's funny because I've seen, like, <laughs> atheists. Or people that don't even believe in God. When something happened, the first thing they holler out is, oh, God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Right. Like you I'm you, you want to raise up. That's funny. That, that, that's, a fun, that's funny, isn't it? If you're in Christianity, you're an atheist. Because you don't believe. Facts. You don't believe because when God says do something and you say, no, nah, that ain't what it mean, that means you don't believe. Mm. I'm just keeping it honest with you. That means you don't believe. You're in a religion. This isn't a religion. Religion is man-made. This isn't man It's a difference. Okay? Christianity is built with paganism. We can prove that. Same thing with these African little, these little, these little, um, you know, these little um, African traditions. That stuff can't save you, brothers and sisters. So you have to come about that and come to who you really are. Okay? I heard people be saying, uh, the universe blessed me. I ain't never heard no when something happened, somebody say, uh, oh, 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 universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, oh, Lord. Right. Oh, universe. If you if you saying the universe bless you, man, you believe in the Big Bang Theory. You best believe that. <laughs> you best believe that. Because once again, brothers and sisters, we being fooled. Mm. We, grope, we grope at noonday. That's what it says. Matter of fact, go to that, Jay. Go to the, uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. And I want you to, but go to that Jeremiah first, though. Two, right? Verse two? Yeah, three and two. Okay. The book of Jeremiah, chapter three and verse two. Go ahead. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places mm -hmm. and see where thou hast not been lying with. Uh huh. And the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian, Arabian in the wilderness. Now, we, now, you think that ain't something new? Mm. You think this is something new? This ain't nothing new. We were doing that back then because during the Trans Sahara slave trade or the Sub Sahara slave trade, let me get that right. We were doing what? During the Ottoman Empire, they put us in slavery. Y'all don't understand. They had us in slavery for 1,400 years. But we don't want to do no research. We just go along with the flow all the time. Okay? Deuteronomy, chapter 28. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 29. There we go. And thou shalt grope at noonday uh -huh. as the blind grope of in dark. Because we looking for everything. I want to be African today. Oh, no, nah, I really ain't an African. We're the indignious people. We were already here. Really. So they run into that. So then we find every philosophy known to man. We never do the research to find out if that really is true. Everything we're showing y'all, we can pull up and prove the points. Chris, scripture says, produce your cause and prove all things. That's what we're supposed to do. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so that's showing you something. So what is it? So keep reading, brother. It says, thou shalt grope at noonday. Thou shalt grope at noonday uh -huh. as the blind gropeth in darkness. Because we're in darkness right now. Mm -hmm. Sin. We're in darkness. We're in sin. So we groping at noonday looking for the light. Okay? When it's sitting right in front of you, the Holy Bible sitting right in front of you. Go ahead. <laughs> and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Mm-hmm. And thou shalt be only oppressed. Oh, so only be what? Only oppressed. Uh huh. And spoiled evermore. And no man shall what? And no man shall save. No you. man gonna save you from this captivity. Malcolm X tried. Martin Luther King tried. 
every mortal man tried and they can't save you. The only one going to save us is, through, is Christ. That's the only one going to save us from this captivity, from this oppression. And he not coming as a man. You best believe that. <laughs> okay? He ain't going to have no uncle in his neck either. You know? That's the problem with our people. We just go along with the flow. Okay? Um, what did I, what I tell you to get? Jeremiah, you already had Jeremiah 3 and 2? Read it one more time, and then we go on to the scholarship with right. the Arabs. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3 and verse 2. Go ahead. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, mm -hmm. and see what thou hast not been lain with. Okay. And the ways hast thou set for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. Mm. And thou hast polluted thy land. Excuse me. Thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Verse 3. Therefore, the showers have been with No, that's all I wanted. Okay. It's just showing you that we were polluted. We polluted. We were polluted because we were linking up with the Arabs. So the same way today, our people still polluted because we're still linking up with the other nations. Even Africans, we're going to prove some points about that. We follow the Africans. Even today, don't realize that, listen, you're following their gods. So that's why we're still in captivity, because we keep following their gods and not our God. Why do you, there's a split in Africa. You got people that are Christians mm -hmm. and the others are in Islam. Yep. They follow the Muslim man's religion. Matter of fact, like Boko Haram. Right. They go around terrorizing people. Mm -hmm. So this is the book. The legacy of Arab Islam in America. So we're going to page 129. Mm, okay. I want to start, like, you can see it right there where it says, therefore. So it says, therefore. Just as kufr is a summon synonym for servitude in classical Muslim thought, the color black became the most obvious sign of servitude in light-skinned Muslim thinking. In other words, to be black is to be a slave. Whoa, what does it say again? To be black is to be a slave. So brothers and sisters, you in the nation of Islam, you and this, you and this doggone religion, you better get the heck out, out of it, because it was intent to put you in slavery. Because we just we gonna go to that. We're going to Joel three to prove that the Arabs and the Africans put us in slavery. Mm -hmm. But we keep on following their gods. But go ahead, bro. Finish up. Finish the up. Arabic word "abd," a slave of whatever color, went through a semantic development and came to specifically refer to black slave, while light-skinned slaves were referred to as Mamluks. <laughs> this is so true. Mm, mm, mm. Mamluks. And further on in later developments, Abd in spoken Arabic, go to the next one, has come to mean black man of whatever status. Oh, so you're an Asiatic black man, right? You are ob. You are ob. You, see, you, you five percenters, y'all really think y'all have the knowledge? Why are these people showing you something? Because all being five percenters is the origin of Islam. Mm -hmm. Clarence X. I mean, come on. He come from Elijah Muhammad. Where Elijah Muhammad get his stuff from? See, see once again, we keep telling y'all. We keep being fooled. We keep thinking, oh, Islam is the black man's religion. Yeah, man. Not realizing that that, that 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 is the Arabs' religion. They telling you how they think of us. They still think of y'all that way. But everybody wants to hold hands. Yep. And meanwhile, get dogged out. Exactly. I'm gonna tell y'all something. The Arabs making plenty of money off us in our neighborhoods. They sell on y'all pork. They don't even eat it, but they sell it to you. So that everything is gonna destroy you. But we just go along with the flow. Aslam alaikum, my brother. We just go along with it. That's almost like how we have that law, how we can sell something to a stranger. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't mind selling to us. Right. They use our laws against us. Right. Because where you think they where you think they get their laws from? The Bahamadans. Where they get their laws? What they, they get their where they get their laws from? You, if you don't believe me, look up Bahamadans. Find right. out who they find out where Muhammad got his customs from. The Jews. Because mm -hmm. he followed our customs. 
So a lot of things you see is going to be similarities. Believe that. Okay, go ahead, brother. The, se the semantic evolution of the word ob from a purely social to racial designation derives from the popular image of the black person in Arab history and society as a slave. Ain't that something? Gosh. As a slave. You All got right. more? Yeah, now let's go to Arab uh, 3. You got it? No, I guess I need two. I need two. Okay, you need two? Okay. You got oh, it? Oh, yeah, I need what's at the bottom. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Slaves were exported. All right, go okay, ahead. Yeah, this is page 143. Slaves were exported also from Kanem Barno via Fezan to Cairo. I just wanted to bring this out to show you some of the places where the Arabs were uh, taking us and selling us. So Cairo's in Egypt. Right. <laughs> Tripoli and I don't know how to pronounce it. Kairawan. People groups living around the Lake Chad area were later exported along this route. Mm. While in the 18th and 19th centuries, Bagurmi bag, bag slaves, especially eunuchs, because mm, mm, mm. that's one of the things that the Arabs did. Yep. They made the men eunuchs, and they used the women as concubines. Yep. And they're still doing it to our women today. Formed an important part. Go to the next one. Formed an important part of the slave trade along this route. Some were sent later to Tripoli, mm. to ports in modern Turkey, Greece, mm. Albania, and southern Yugoslavia, which were all at the time under the Ottoman Empire, like you said. The Ottoman Empire. And that, and you talking, you talking over fourteen hundred years, brothers and sisters, when this stuff was going. Was that it? No. Okay. Slaves from the Middle Nigger and Atlantic coast were also drawn from Gao via Wargla to Tahert in modern Algeria, and Kairawan, and later from Timbuktu to Tawat and. Lemkin, <laughs> Sigil Massa, Fez, and other centers of the Western Maghreb, from where some passed into Muslim Spain and Sicily when it was under Muslim domination between the 9th and 11th centuries. That's where your, you know, mm -hmm. your Moors come from. That's where the Moors, right. More science. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. Another byword, being a more. Mm -hmm. so Eben Calden testifies to the presence of a large black slave population mm -hmm. in 14th century North Africa when he wrote that blacks constituted the ordinary mass of slaves. Muslim Berber groups of North Africa like the Tareg and Moors became the chief agents in the raiding and in the traffic of black slaves to North Africa, mm -hmm. Spain, Turkey, mm. and the Mediterranean world, some of whom were taken as far as India. Mm -hmm. So it's showing y'all. So more when it's time for time. It's complicated. It's, 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 it's complicated, but remember something. You got the more... That's you. You got. You got Spain. So a lot of people call Moors in Spain. That's how some of my people got there. You had also had the Dark Ages during that time too. See, people have to understand something. When you look at history, you look at how, how the Ottoman Empire stretched. That's fourteen hundred years. Okay, they just the, the Ottoman Empire just fizzed out in the nineteen fifties. I think. I want to make sure I get that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
like the 1950s. So you have to understand, you still got slaves look like us over there today. <laughs> not good, brother. I can tell you that right now. It's not good. But our brothers keep talking about you want to call themselves Moors. To understand what more come from. I'll show you something in Babylon and mm -hmm. too after class. Well, don't worry about after class. But anyway, let's go to the. So that was it, right? Let's go to Joel. Just oh, one, more, one, one more. One more. One more. Okay. Um. Yeah, go to that. This last one. Okay, then we're going to go to Joel. It says, many eyewitnesses. Mm hmm. And then we're going to go to the, what the scriptures say about that because we have to show y'all something. This is something that's in the Bible, y'all prophecies. But go ahead, brother. All right, so this is page 145, second paragraph. Many eyewitness accounts talk in very sobering terms of the loss of life along the route. So they're talking about uh, the slave route between Africa and taking them to Mecca or wherever. Mm -hmm. So one such account given by an eyewitness in 1822 talks about a well near Bir Mushuru, where the ground around it is strewed with human skeletons. The slaves who arrived exhausted with thirst and fatigue at one spot there were more than 100 skeletons. Gustav Noctigal talked about littered skeletons and half buried in the sand mummified corpses of some of the children still covered with blue cotton rags. I looked that up. That's something they made you wear if you were a slave. At the same well. At other wells referred to as the wells of El Hamar, the skeletons were countless. The root itself was equally littered with skeletons accumulated at the rate of 80 and 90 a day. According to one major Denham, the Arabs laughed heartily at my expression of horror and said, they are only blacks. Nambu. Damn their fathers. Mm and began knocking their limbs about with the butt end of their firelock, saying, this was a woman, this was a youngster. The methods of killing exhausted or sick slaves and those who attempted to escape in East Africa were also used on the Trans-Saharan route. Mm -hmm. Nachigal accompanied a caravan of hundreds of slaves from Bagirmi to the slave markets of Kuka and witnessed exhausted and sick slaves being slaughtered and their arteries cut open. After such hard experiences, Nachigal pointed out that in estimating the weight of the burden placed by the slave trade on its pagan victims, it had to be borne in mind that for everyone who arrived at Kuka, there were probably three to four who died or disappeared on the way. So y'all still want to be an African and be an Arab? That's how they saw about our people, brothers and sisters. But let's go to what the scriptures say. That was good scholarship. It showed you a history on that. That's the trans Sahara slave trade. And that stuff was going on for over 1,400 years. Okay, believe that. Okay? Let but us. But I just want to say this. Real quick. Go ahead, say it, bro. But these are the two groups of people that you look to. Yep. To follow behind. Yep. The Arabs with their Islam and the so called white man with his Christianity. Yep. After all these things they have done to us, you want to follow their understanding. Yep. You want to follow. You want to be just like them. Let's go to Joel. Chapter 3, you start at verse 3. Yes, sir. Of course. Of course they do. It ain't, they still have an active slave economy. They do. It's still going on today. Yeah. Yep. Our people don't never read. They never go and never look at the... The media right now is blinding our people, y'all. We don't... When you don't look at the international news to see what's really going on, they're not going to tell you everything that's going on. They're going to tell you what they want you to know. And we just go along with the flow and think the world is nothing but peaches and cream until it hits home. 
Let's go to Joel, chapter 3, verse 3, brother. You might have started at 2. You started at verse 2. The book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 2. I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat is the valley of decision. That's going to happen. It hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. Read. And I will plead with them for my people mm -hmm. and for my heritage, Israel, mm. whom they have scattered among the nations. Among the what? Among the nations. We're scattered still today. That's why you can find some Israelites in Spain. You can find some Israelites in Portugal. You can find Israelites everywhere because we're scattered on the four corners of the earth. Read. And parted my land. And parted my land. And that's what they have done. Even today, the Lord's land is being parted by the Gentiles. Believe that. Read. Verse 3. And they have casted lots for my people. Now, you, when you cast lots for somebody, you put them on an auction block. And you, what you're doing, you're selling them off. That's what that means. Cast lots for my people. Nigga, 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 nigga sold the Master Reynolds in Virginia. Read on. And have given a boy for an harlot. He says given a boy for a harlot. That means the boy, the young man, was used as breeders. Okay? They would use the biggest, biggest slave and match him up. And sometimes they would use him to even have incest with their mother. That's where they get the term MF from. A lot of people don't even know that. A lot of stuff they were doing. They, they, listen, they were doing a lot of wickedness to our people. But read on, though. Keep reading. And sold a girl for wine. And sold our women for wine, for orgies. Okay? They didn't care. You think pedophilia just started? Pedophilia was going on back then. Read on. That they might drink. They might drink because they would give a gift. Okay? One of their own little travelers come in, I'm going to give her as a gift to you. Okay? Read on. Verse 4. Yea, and that have... And, yea. And what have ye to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? Z Tyree and Zidon do with the Africans. Tyree and Zidon. Okay? What have you to do with me? Read on. And all the coast of Palestine. A coast of what? Palestine. The Palestinians, the Arabs. So they got together with the Africans. Okay? During that time. So Palestine, you got the Palestinians, the Palestinians today, those dealing with the Arabs. Read on. Will ye render me a recompense? The mo hey, listen. They felt that by putting us in slavery, they're going to pay the most high back by putting his chosen by putting us in slavery. But watch what the most high says. And if you render me a recompense uh -huh. swiftly mm. and speedily, mm. will I return your recompense upon your own head? The most high goes, he can return it back to your own head. Because of y'all think y'all getting away. See, we keep telling y'all this ain't a black and white thing. See, you had dark nations had us in slavery too. It just so happens now we got the top demon on the earth housing slavery today. We just showing y'all something. So we showing y'all history on being a pan-African. The Africans still put us in slavery. Was that it? No, sir. Keep going, brother. Verse 5. Right. Because you have taken my silver mm. and my gold mm. and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things, mm. the children of Judah. And the children of Jerusalem. The children, let's talk about the southern kingdom. The children of Judah is telling you that the Judites and also the rest of the southern kingdom, which would be the Levites and would be the Benjamites. Okay, modern day today would be the Levites, would be the Haitians. And you have the, uh, you have the Benjamin would be what we call the West Indians. And then, as you know, Judah would be the bulk of it, would be the American blacks. But we have Judah scattered on the four corners of the earth, too. It's just the bulk of Israel is in the Western Hemisphere. Read on. I want to make that clear. Read on. The children of Judah mm. and the children of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Have ye sold unto the Grecians? Unto the who? Unto the Grecians. Because they sold us to the so-called white man. So when people keep saying Africans sold Africans in slavery, that's a damn lie. The Bible just said, you know, you had the Africans and the Arabs sold us to the Grecians, sold us to the so-called white man. So you're going to believe the Bible, you're going to believe their false history. Because you hear people keep saying, I had one brother told me the other day, yeah, man, you know, our people sold us into slavery. I said, bro, where are you getting that from? Where are you getting that from? Or have you did your research on that? Who would you hear? And then on top of that, if you're going to call yourself an African, what African are you? Because everybody wants, you know, you know what's funny? When they say Africa, they want to run to Egypt so bad. They run to Egypt first. Okay, nobody said I want to be a um, Somalian. <laughs> They don't say that. Why you don't ever see our people claiming to be the uh the, <laughs> the bone lip 
uh, right. pee drinking African. Right. You don't want to be that. You want to be an Egyptian. <laughs> Not realizing that the Egyptians don't even want to be Egyptians. You, 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 you believe that? <laughs> Egyptians don't want to be Egyptians. But you know what? Uh, something about that too, Ralph. Yeah. The most high raised them up. Exactly. You don't want to raise them up to be what they were. Right. And they took them out. Right. <laughs> I'm probably going to have time to go over Leviticus 18, brother. 18. But that's why I'm going to go to Ezekiel. We're going to go to Ezekiel. We're going we're gonna to just skip over that. Let's go to Ezekiel 29 and 6. Because, and we're going to go, and then we're, then we're going to um, Isaiah 30. And then we're going to just, then we're going to finish up. Because I don't, I, man, we could be here all day long. I'm telling you. 29 and 6. 29 and 6. Ezekiel 29 and 6. Let me, let me find out what happened to the Egyptians. Because brothers love to talk about claim Egypt. Don't realize Egypt is a byword. Mm. You know Egypt's real name is Mizrahim. Mm. If you don't believe me, look it up. Egypt is a Greek word. <laughs> mm. Even the Egyptians are <laughs> mingled people. Right. We're going to find out about that when you go to Ezekiel 29. They're like bougie black people. <laughs> <laughs> the, book, the book of Ezekiel. Right. Chapter 29 and verse 6. Go ahead, brother. And all the inhabitants of Egypt. All the inhabitants of what? Of Egypt. Go ahead. Shall know. That I am the Lord. Oh, you better believe it. I already know now. Because the Most High destroyed Egypt. Read on. Because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. You must believe that. Because we was in slavery under them. Read on. Verse 7. When they took hold of thee by the land, by thou the didst break mm -hmm. and rend all their sh sh shoulder. Mm -hmm. And when they leaned upon thee, thou breakest. And made us all their loins to be at a stand. Go ahead. Verse 8. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will bring a sword upon thee mm. and cut off man and beast out of thee. He did that. Because remember something. Egypt was desolate. Mm. For a long time, they just digging Egypt out. Still digging. Still Egypt. digging Egypt out. Okay. Read on. Where was their gods then? Verse Where were those gods at then? Mm. Go ahead. Verse 9. Right. And the land of Egypt shall be desolate. Shall be what? Shall be desolate. Go ahead. And waste. Uh-huh. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Uh-huh. Because he hath said, the river is mine, and I have made because it. Because that's the pride. Didn't Pharaoh say the river is mine? The most I showed him who was boss. Best believe that. Okay. And then he letting you know also it should be desolate. So why your book of the dead can prophesy that the Lord is going to destroy y'all? You going to be Egyptian so bad? Why, why your book of the dead, your books, didn't tell, because they keep saying, well, y'all stole stuff from the, from the, from the Egyptians with the, the Bible. No, the Bible predates, predates Egypt. Because why can we tell you what's going to happen to Egypt? At least they named it right. The right. Book, the, the book, book of, of the, the dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> go, go ahead, brother. Verse 10. Verse 10. Uh -huh. Behold, therefore, I am against thee mm. and against thy rivers. And I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste mm. and desolate for the Tower of Sani, mm -hmm. even unto Ethiopia. Mm. Excuse me, even unto the border of Ethiopia. Go ahead. No foot of man shall pass through it, mm. nor foot of beast shall pass through it. Mm -hmm. Neither shall it be inhabited 40 years. And that happened. Because right now, the people you see on the land today, those are Arabs. Those aren't even the true Egyptians. Okay, those are Arabs over there right now. Those aren't even true Egyptians. Read on. Verse 12. And I will make the land of Egypt desolate mm. in the midst of the countries that are desolate. And her cities among the cities that are laid waste shall be desolate 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I will scatter the Egyptians. He's going to do what? And I will scatter the Egyptians. Why do you think the, Egypt, the, real, the true Egyptians are scattered among Africa? The Watutsis. Okay. You have some of them, you have the, Su the Sudanese. Those are the true Egyptians right there. They don't even want to be called Egyptian. Mm. But you want to call yourself Egyptian, though. The real Egyptians don't even want to call themselves Egyptians, but we want to fall around, fall down. I want to be an Egyptian. Not realize that's a byword. It's really Mizrahim. Go ahead, brother. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, mm -hmm. and I will disperse them through the countries. He did that. Go Yet ahead. Thus said the Lord God. At the end of 40 years will I gather the Egyptians from the people where they were scattered. Go ahead. And I will bring again the captivity of Egypt. Uh -huh. And I will cause them to return into the land of Petros, into the land of their habitation. 
and they shall be there a base kingdom. A what kingdom? A base kingdom. That means on the bottom. That means you want to be an Egyptian? You're going to be a base kingdom. They're not going to rise no more. So why we keep trying to hold on to dead things? You know, you want to head on. You want to hold on to something that can't even save you. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> and it shall be the basis of kingdoms. The basis of the work. <laughs> You're going to be the basis of kingdoms. But you still want to hold on to Egypt, though. You still want to be the African. Go ahead. Neither shall it exalt itself anymore above the nations. For I will diminish them mm. that they shall no more rule over the nations. They're not going to rule no more. So why we keep wanting to fall for these nations that's not going to rule? They're going to be in captivity. Matter of fact, they're going to serve the Israelites. I'm just going, y'all going to see Canaan going to be a servant. Y'all didn't know that? That's the whole lie of the curse of Ham. See, what it means is servitude isn't because of his skin color. See, that's what they mess up. But the whole earth was dark at one time. So when the so-called white man won't use uh, Malachi 1 and 6 and try to say, Sir, serve your master, that's a daggone lie. They try to use that to try to justify their slave, try to put, this, put us in slavery in that context. Okay? <laughs> See, y'all don't understand we know these things. We find these things out through what? Research. Now let's go to the book of, um, let's go to, let's, let's deal with the Egyptians again. We want to we we still hold on to Egypt. Let's go to the book of Acts, uh, Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Woe to the rebellious children of the Lord. people are rebellious as I don't know what. When we went to that um that, that festival, mm -hmm. our people were so rebellious. We showed a brother, brother, you can't eat pork. He didn't, he said, man, I can't stop eating. He, he wanted to find a way to eat pork. Israel, we're very rebellious. We're hard-headed. Go ahead. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, mm. that take counsel, but not of me, mm -hmm. and that cover with a covering, mm -hmm. but not of my spirit, mm -hmm. that they may add sin to sin. That's what's going on today. Our people just love to commit sin with the nations. Go ahead. That walk to go down into Egypt mm. and have not asked at my mouth. To strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh mm. and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Because remember something, this Egypt is talking about is America. America is the new Egypt. If you look on the back of your dollar bill, you see the pyramid with the all seeing our Ra. Okay? Our people, they basically go along with Egypt. Okay? And right now, today, Egypt is the shadow. See, America cast the shadow of Egypt. This place is the house of bondage. Okay? As a matter of fact, what, 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 what were you reading? Uh, okay. Now I go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. I prove the point about I prove the point about Egypt. Now, what does it say again about Egypt again? We trust in what in Egypt? In Pharaoh mm -hmm. and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. The shadow of Egypt. Go ahead. Therefore shall the strength just, of Pharaoh uh -huh. be your shame. Shall be what? Your shame. Go ahead. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. confusion. We are confused. You don't even know who you are. We think, one man, you think an African. You think you're an Egyptian. You think you're this. We don't know. It's our confusion. So when I made a statement about New Egypt, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And I want you to pay attention to this, y'all. This is prophecy right here. Was that it? Yeah, yeah. J jump, to, jump to 31. Now go jump to chapter 31 and stay in Isaiah. Mm -hmm. But we're going to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, to prove a point what I just said about this place is New Egypt. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 68. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Mm-hmm. By the way, where I spake unto thee, mm -hmm. thou shalt see it no more again. We want to see our land. So it said, bring you into Egypt again, because the first time I went to Egypt, if you look at a, at a map, you have to understand Egypt is northeast Africa. Okay, it's close to Jerusalem. So why do we have to catch a ship to go into Egypt when we walked the first time? So the new Egypt is talking about, is talking about America, the house of bondage. Okay, because why? 
Look at how, I said, look at the back of your dollar bill. Look at Washington, D.C., the Washington Monument, that obelisk. Okay, that represents Egypt. Go ahead. He said it was ships, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Okay, cargo slave ships. Didn't we come over here in cargo slave ships? Starting with the Hispanics in the 1400s with the Spanish Inquisition. All the way to the, we're always dealing with the, um, the Middle Passage during that time. You have to understand something, brothers and sisters. It applies to Hispanics just like it applies to the blacks. Read on. By the way, where I spake unto thee. As Moses prophesied to happen. Read on. Thou shalt see it no more again. We want to see our homeland Jerusalem again to when Christ come back and deliver Israel. Read on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies mm -hmm. for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall save you. No man shall redeem you but Christ. That's it. Okay? That's it. That's all that we have to look forward to if we repent. The repentant Israelites are going to get saved from this captivity. That's what you have to be saved from, brothers and sisters. Okay? Now let's go, let's go stay in Isaiah 31 and verse 1. I'll read already 3. The book of Isaiah chapter 31 and verse 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Mm. Woe to till death and destruction for them to go down to Egypt for help. So, so we, we, we're looking for another nation to save us. Right. That's what we're doing. We're going to the, our oppressors. First thing that came to my mind is Black Lives Matter. Right. Black, forget about it. They're not, they, they're not going to help us. Nope. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help mm. and stay on horses mm. and trust in chariots yep. because they are many. And in horsemen, because they are very strong. Mm -hmm. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. So we put our faith in this man's military. Right. <laughs> we don't put our faith in the Most High. We put our faith in another nation. Okay, the Lord said death and destruction to us to go down into Egypt for help. Because the one we're supposed to put our faith in is Christ. That's it. We shouldn't put our faith in no other nation. Nobody else can save us from what? From destruction. We have to look for Christ to save us if we repent. Keep that in mind. Repent. That's what we have to do. Read on, brother. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. Yet he also is wise mm -hmm. and will bring evil. Oh, who's going to bring evil? He's going to bring evil. The most high. Read on. And will not call back his word. Oh, if he said it, it's going to happen. Read but on. will will arise against the house of the evildoers mm. and against the help of them that work iniquity. That work sin. So you the one that want to wallow in sin with these nations? You against the Most High, and He will destroy you. Read on. Now the Egyptians are men. They what? You sure they ain't gods? Are men? Because the man said they were gods. What did the Most High call them? And. Now, the Egyptians are men. Go ahead. And not God. Mm. And their horses flesh and not spirit. Mm. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that help shall fall. Mm -hmm. And he that is hoping shall fall, fall down. <laughs> and they all shall fall together. They all going to fall. So when you, 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 believe like that here. you better believe it. Modern Egypt. Modern Egypt. No, this already happened. See, y'all understand, Egypt is already, this is talking about the new Egypt. Because, see, remember, you're in Isaiah now. Egypt was destroyed in Exodus. So that's why y'all understand, that's why y'all always have to go precept upon precept, because it's twofold. This Egypt is talking about modern-day Egypt and America today. So what our people are doing, they're following the ways of the other nations, primarily the so-called white man, because he's ruling. That's why we say the so-called white man. See, we keep telling y'all, this ain't a hate campaign, it's a truth campaign. Who rules everything? Who you have to get permission from to go somewhere? The so-called white man. I have to have a passport to go across, go to go overseas, don't I? I can't just say, you know what? I'm going to um, Egypt today. You better take your buddy, get you a passport. So who controls that? Like you say in Revelation uh, 11 and 8. <laughs> right. Yeah. This place is Egypt and it's Sodom. Exactly. All day. But let's go to how we got down here. Let's go to the book of St. Luke. Mm -hmm. I said it, chapter 21 and verse 
20? Oh, with 20. 20. Uh-huh. Okay. First was 20. Okay. The book of St. Luke, chapter 21 and verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem uh-huh. come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. What did he say? The book of St. Luke, uh-huh. chapter 21 and verse 20. Go ahead. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies. That happened in 70 AD. Christ is prophesying to the Israelites, when you see Jerusalem come past with armies, when you see the Romans come to Jerusalem, what does he tell them? Then know that the desolation thereof is not. The desolation is about to come. He's letting you know destruction is coming to Jerusalem. Read on. Then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. He said flee into the mountains. The mountains talking about at this particular time going down into Africa and being scattered among other places. But it primarily down into Africa. Flee to the mountains. Read on. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. It's telling you the people that we supposed to come back to um, Jerusalem to do feasts. Christ saying don't do that. Because right now vengeance is coming to Jerusalem. Read on. And let not them that are in the countries enter there unto. So don't enter in. Because three times a year we had to go do major feasts. Okay, so Lord said don't do that. You can't do that now because these be the days of vengeance. Read. For these be the days of vengeance. <laughs> right. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. Mm-hmm. But woe unto them that are with child, mm-hmm. and to them that give suck. Right. In those days, for there shall be a great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. Mm-hmm. Verse 24. Right. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. That happened to our people. Our people died. Same way now, we died during the trans sahara slave trade. We died during the Middle Passage, the Spanish Inquisition. We died on all those fronts. Read on. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles Uh until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Right now, Jerusalem was trodden down of the Gentiles, the 70 AD, and it's still being trodden down by the new Gentiles over there today. Just to let you know. Let's go to some scholarship now. I wonder why uh, Mm -hmm. Christianity never read that scripture about Gentiles. They don't want to read it. Negro one, let's go to it, and we're gonna be finishing up pretty soon. Okay, y'all. This is this book is called "The Myth of the Negro Past." We're starting on page four in the middle paragraph. It's called the myth of the Negro past. That's what it's called. All right, page four in the middle paragraph. The Negro people were brought to America in small consignments from many parts of the African continent. Got it. Oh, can you? I'm starting up further. That's the right page. Yeah, yeah. There there you go. There you go. Okay, go ahead. There you go. Okay. Sorry about that. (coughs) The Negro people were brought to America in small consignments from many parts of the African continent over a long period of time. In the course of capture, importation, and enslavement, they lost every vestige of the African culture. The native languages disappeared immediately and so completely that scarcely a word of the African origin found its way into English. Owing to the dispersion, owing to the dispersion to the accidental or unintentional separation of tribal stocks, 
and to the suppression of religious exercises. The supernatural beliefs and practices completely disappeared. The native forms of family life and the codes and customs of sex control were destroyed by the circumstances of slave life. And procreation and the relations of the sexes were reduced to a simple and primitive level. So with every element of the social heritage, uh, I'm going to drop down to the bottom paragraph. And this goes with uh, Jeremiah 17 and 4 we read earlier. The Negro of the plantation came into the picture with a completely broken cultural heritage. He came directly from Africa or indirectly from Africa through the West Indies because that's they would, the way they would take you first. There had been for him no preparation for and no organized exposure to the dominant and approved patterns of American culture. What he knew of life was what he could learn from other slaves or from the examples set by white planta planters themselves. Now let's go to the, if you got a comment, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. Let's, but let's go to the next one. You, if you got a comment, go ahead. Now I'm just showing you how when we went to Jeremiah 17, 4, it's showing how we were going to be discontinued from our heritage. That proves the point. Okay. Um, but just showing you something. We go to Jeremiah 17, 4, because it's showing you how it's a prophecy. We were going to discontinue from our heritage because we were disobedient, brothers and sisters. That's why we lost. That's why we don't know who we are, because the Most High prophesied this was going to happen. Okay. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, excuse me, and thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. Go ahead. That I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. <gasps> For right. ye have kindled a fire in my anger, mm. which shall burn forever. You see that? We're in the land of our enemies. We're serving our enemies right now. Okay? And that 400-year prophecy we're showing y'all. That's, that's, that's even false. But we've been here longer than that. See, y'all have to understand something. You cannot go by what people tell you. Do your research. But go ahead, let's finish up, brother. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, that's, yeah, that's it. As regards Negro, Negro slavery, the history of the West Indies is in 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 yeah, inescapable. It's mm -hmm. spelled a little different. Inescapable from that of North America. So it's the same thing. In them, the plantation system originated and reached its greatest scale. And from the institution of slavery was extended to the continent. Mm. See, um, people, a lot of people don't realize uh, un the United States was the last place of this great slavery. Because it started in the Caribbean, then went down to Brazil, then came back up to North America. It's another thing. That's another way to destroy that uh, 400, 400 year, year prophecy. prophecy. Right, right, right. Was that it? <clears throat> no. Um, the industrial system on the islands, and particularly on those occupied by the British, as accordingly instructive as an introduction and a parallel to the continental regime so it was a precursor to what they were going to do here that's why you had willie lynch come from down there right up to the states right because he even way. said it in the caribbean he started there first and he even said it even in this book you read that book willie lynch it shows you where he started from okay you understood that was that it you got more all right so now i want to deal with um the title of the class Mm -hmm. which is which African are you so now we're going to deal with some of the places where they took us from because it's it's like it's lost to a lot of our people it's mm -hmm. just well I'm African mm -hmm. well like the title of the class which, which African, African are, are you, you? <laughs> right so we're going to deal with some of these places 
And I guess you're there already. Let's start with large numbers. Yep, yep. Okay, large numbers of slaves were shipped from the Nigger Delta region, as indicated by the manifest of ships loaded at Calabar and Bonny, the principal ports. These were mainly Igbo slaves, mm. representing a people which today inhabit a large portion of this region. Their tendency to despondency noted in many parts of the New World and a tradition of suicide as a way out of difficulties has often been remarked. As, for example, in Haiti, where the old saying, Ebos pen corayo, the Ebo hang themselves, is still current. That this attitude toward life is still well recognized among the Ebo in Africa was corroborated in the field recently by Dr. J.S. Harris. The same tendency was noticed among the Calabar Negroes, another generic name for Ebos among the slaves. In the United States, as is indicated by the remark of biographer of Henry Lawrence, that in South Carolina, the frequent suicides among Calabar slaves indicate the different degrees of sensitive and independent spirit among the various Negro tribes. So, now go to the next one. So the Ebos like to uh, one <laughs> their way of escape is committing suicide. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it just made me my made you think about that. Go yeah, ahead. My father committed suicide. All right. This next one should say the slaves brought to America. Is that what you're, yeah. But some things we might not be able to hit everything, y'all. We're not gonna be able to hit everything. Um, um, you got a few more, and then we just gonna try to, you know, go ahead on. We can't hit. We Let's see. I want to deal with. Yeah, go to those last two. Yeah. <coughs> yep. Okay. Okay, so there's part of it you don't have on there. It's I didn't get a picture. It comes from the page before. It's just a few words. I'm going to start there. So it says, For we need merely turn to these works, written by men and women who surveyed the scene of slavery while it was at its height in the West Indies and utilize the many tribal names contained therein. Is that where it's at? Okay. Contained therein. Names which, when located in Africa, are found to lie within the regions indicated as those where the most intensive slaving was carried on. The Ashanti and Fonti of the Gold Coast. The former most frequently termed Coromantes after a place named of their homeland, are mentioned most often by those who wrote of the British possessions, continental as well as insular. The Dahomeyan and allied peoples, at time called Whitus, after the major seacoast town of Dahomey, or Pawpaws from Popo, a town not Far to west, far to the west, are especially prominent in the French writings. The French planters had little liking for the Gold Coast slaves, and these scarcely figure in Moreau de Saint Mary listing of tribes representing in Haiti. In similar matter, the Dahomeans, who were the favorite slaves of the French were not fancied by the English. If you were paying attention to this, these different nations want like different types of slaves. So they separated you according to your characteristics. Right. 
So we like we know the French, they got the Haitians. Right. <clears throat> now. You see, as it as is to be seen when we contrast the 14,312 Gold Coast Negroes in our list of Jamaica imports with the 3,912 from Dahomey. Another type of slave frequently mentioned is the Nago. This term is used for the Yoruba of Western Nigeria, whose language is called by, th by that name. Historical records for those parts of Latin America where present-day Negro customs have been studied, Cuba and Brazil are not available. Mm. In the case of the latter, they were burned to wipe out every trace of slavery Gosh. when the Negroes were emancipated in that country. And if they exist for Cuba, they have not been published. But such data as we have established that the Nago slaves were favorites of the Spanish and Portuguese planters. That would mean that the bulk of them would be in Brazil. Right. Speaking, yeah, that's Portugal. They speak yeah. Portuguese down there. Mm -hmm. From which it follows that it is logical to find your Reuben customs preponderant in the Af African survivals reported from these countries. For the rest of the slaving area, evidences of Africanisms are fragmentary. The Mandingo, Senegalese, and Hausa of the sub-desert area to the north have left traces of their presence, principally in Brazil. The vast masses of Congo slaves that we know were imported have made their influence felt disproportionately little, though few a few tribal names, a few tribal deities, some linguistical survivals, mm. and more. Often the word Congo itself are encountered. So these are just a few of the places where they were bringing our, our brothers and sisters from. Right. It also, I'm sorry. It also reminds me of when we get a so-called DNA test. Yeah. That's all they telling you on them DNA tests is where they brought you from. Right. 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 That's all they telling you. And that's why you can't trust DNA, y'all. Because DNA, it, I'm going to hit y'all with this. DNA is only good for paternity. Okay? You, you, can tr I mean, you can't go but so far because remember something. If I go by a name of somebody, your names have changed. So I can't go by what my byword is, my name I got now, because, my, because the slave master gave us these names. So I keep on going back and tracing these names. How can I trace that back through DNA? You can't do it. I can only trace, like, my biological children. Or your biological, you can only go back because you got, cause how are you going to get their DNA and trace that all the way back? Is it going to be impossible? So that's what we keep telling everybody. Your spirit has to bear witness, okay, to know who you are. I mean, we only going to... Um, we're going to do but so much. But anyway, let's get right back to the scripts right quick. Let's go to the book. So it's letting you know what we want to point out is which African are you? Because during that time, we were scattered through all different parts of Africa too. And they got 54 different countries in Africa by itself. So you call yourself an African-American, brothers and sisters. You're calling yourself two continents after the name of the two white men. Yeah. They took us from many, many places, like a 3,000-mile area. Right. Uh, even like uh, uh, another one I left out didn't get to was like Bantus mm -hmm. and Angolans. Yep. But let's, let's go to the future. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 9 and 10. And I'm on Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 12. We're about to finish up. Okay. The book of Revelation, mm -hmm. chapter 13 and verse 9. Right. If any man have an ear, let him hear. If you have a spiritual ear, you have to listen and hear. Okay, we just went over some things, some facts, biblically, historically. We just went over those things. It said, if a man have an ear, let him hear. Read on. Verse 10, he that leadeth into captivity. He, he leadeth into captivity. Then we, weren't we lead, led into different captivities? Mainly, we were, laying, we, were laying, we were put into captivity by different dark-skinned nations, okay, that we just proved. And we have to understand that right now, we're under the rulership of the so-called white man right now.
Read on. He that leadeth into captivity uh-huh. shall go into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity must go into captivity. He got to serve because we didn't, didn't we serve? And we're still serving today. Still serving today. Read on. He that killeth with the sword. Where we kill with the sword, we show some horrible things that happen to our people. Okay? Kill with the sword. Read on. Must be killed with the sword. It must happen. When Christ come back, I'm going to keep that out. I'm going to say this one more time. When Christ come back, I'm not saying that we're going to go ahead and form an army and go and do something to somebody. And if, I, if anybody thinks that that's a lie, we don't push violence. Okay? So we, that we want to clear that up. When Christ come back, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to clear that up because people love to twist our words and push, it to, to, and push nonsense. And that's not what we're about. Read on. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we're going to, that's what's going to have to have this future tense. Zephaniah 2 and 12 and Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. Since you want to be African, right? In the book of <laughs> Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 12. Go ahead. Ye Ethiopians ye also. What? You, you what? Ye Ethiopians also. What should happen? Ye shall be slain by my sword. Mm. You want to know why the Ethiopians got to get it? Because it's a lie that says they say they have the Ark of the Covenant. So you best believe they have to pay for that. See? We keep telling y'all this ain't a black and white thing, y'all. It's a nation thing. It's about dealing with the nations. The nations, every nation on earth had us in captivity. Guess what? They have to pay. Believe that. Okay, dark-skinned nations and light-skinned nations have to pay. So we keep telling y'all. It ain't about color. We keep telling y'all. Okay, this ain't about a hate campaign. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 16. The book of Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 16. And it shall come to pass uh-huh. that every one that is left in all the nations which mm-hmm. came against Jerusalem mm-hmm. shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, mm-hmm. and to keep the feast of tabernacles. So everybody, you know, the people that's in captivity, because the Israelites going to rule. So that means they're going to have to keep our feasts. The same way we have to keep these pagan feasts here. You best believe when Christ, when Christ has the kingdom, okay, and the Israelites going to rule with them, be joint heirs. The other nations going to have to come and serve. If they don't, we're going to find out what happened. Read. Verse 17, and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth mm-hmm. unto Jerusalem mm-hmm. to worship the king, mm-hmm. the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Oh, so the Lord said, oh, yeah, you don't want to come and serve? No rain for you. Read on. And if the family of Egypt go the family not, of who of Egypt uh-huh. go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen mm. that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Mm-hmm. Verse nineteen: This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Mm-hmm. So, so what, 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 what verse was that? Verse 19. Keep going. Verse 20. And that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses mm-hmm. holiness unto the Lord. Because it's going to be pageantry when we do our feast. The same way y'all had the Macy Christmas Day Parade, we're going to have the serious parade with the Most High. Read on. <laughs> holiness unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls thereof the altar. Yea. Every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah Mm -hmm. shall be holiness Mm -hmm. unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seed it therein. And in that day there shall be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord. There should be no more what? There should be no more Canaanite Uh in the house of the Lord of hosts. So is that you know right then then, 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 there? You want to be an Egyptian or an African? They're not going to be nothing but servants. So you want to be a servant? Okay. Keep on wanting to be an African all day. Okay? <laughs> all right. Last scripture. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26 and 27. To find out the history, what's going to have to happen to these nations. The book, the Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 26. Uh-huh. And he that overcometh and keep my works until the end. Your what? My works. 
until the end. I thought they said you didn't have to have works. Keep the works. Read. To him will I give power over the nation. When I hold the hands. When Christ come back, you best believe the repentant Israelites are going to be back on top. Read. Verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Aren't we being ruled that way today? You best believe they're ruling us with a rod of iron. Read on. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. And we're being broken every day. The same way we're just letting y'all know that's the future. So you want to link up with the nations? Go ahead and link up with them. But that ain't going to stop the Israelites from ruling. So you might as well just do what you want to do. We're telling you, 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 you so-called blacks and so-called Hispanics have to come back to your heritage on who you really are and have to start keeping commandments in the faith of Christ. Simple as that. That's what you have to do. Okay? And let's go. And this is it. Let's go to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. In the book of Acts 5, 29. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 21. Go ahead. For, he, for even here unto... Were ye called? It wasn't no accident, brothers and sisters, that we were called into this. We were called by the Most High in Christ to come to the knowledge of who we are. Read on. Because Christ also suffered for us. Yes. Leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. We follow Christ. We follow Christ mm -hmm. as it is written. Now follow man. Read. Verse 22. Who did no sin. He did no sin. Christ didn't transgress the law. Christ didn't even have a foolish thought. Read. Neither was gal found in his mouth. Christ wasn't. He, he didn't have no trickery. He didn't have no craftiness about him. He was straightforward. Read on. Verse 23, who when he was reviled, mm. reviled not again. Mm -hmm. When he suffered, he threatened not. Right. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. He committed himself to judges righteously, the most high. That's, we, that's who Christ is basically patterning himself after, and that's who we have to have patterning ourselves after Christ. Okay, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29, and finish up, brother. The book of Acts, chapter 5, and verse 29. Go ahead. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, mm -hmm. we ought to obey God mm -hmm. rather than man. And that's who we must obey, brothers and sisters. We must obey the Most High Christ rather than the silly philosophies and ideologies of men. Okay, we want to give the Most High Christ all the praise and glory. For allowing us to even expound, to be able to teach this word in spirit and the truth, brothers and sisters. Um, was everyone good on today's topic? Uh, do our brothers and sisters have any questions pertaining to today's topic? If that's it, we good. All right, brothers and sisters. Well, anyway... Like we said, um, Shalom, okay. All right, well, anyway, Shalom, Most High Christ, blessed there to everybody. Um, Y'all stay strong until next time, next week. Join us again for Israelite 101 because <laughs> we have to go over some different topics. Um, we're going to go over some different things, brothers and sisters. Um, so y'all just stay tight. Y'all stay strong. Pray for one another. Okay, and it's customer always, you know, just stay in these scriptures, brothers and sisters. That's what you have to do. We have to obey God rather than men. Okay? So like I said before, y'all stay strong. Peace and blessings to y'all, okay? Shalom. 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 Shalom.